What's going on guys, Overman back again, and today I have to talk about a game that's been blowing me away lately, The Witcher 3. And no, this is not a parody or impersonation or anything like that, I'm serious. I've put 28 hours into The Witcher now and I finally feel comfortable giving my first impressions of The Witcher 3. And man, oh man, am I enjoying the hell out of this game. But let's talk about why. First off, the story has been pretty good so far. It's very engaging and interesting. Basically, you're playing as Geralt who is looking for a girl named Cirilla or Ciri for short, who's like a daughter to him. Now, Ciri is very special. She's a child of the Elder Blood, and she's extremely gifted and has special powers. And of course, that makes her a target. So now she's on the run from the Wild Hunt. So Geralt is trying to find her along with Yennefer, who's basically like a mother to Ciri. And Geralt's ex, but also maybe current girlfriend, depending on your decisions. And thankfully, this isn't some simpleton story like the one you get in Destiny, where the bad guy shows up, you kill him, and it's like, wham bam, thank you ma'am, story's over. In The Witcher, you embark on a proper journey to find Ciri, and along the way, you meet up with friends from Geralt's past, you make new friends and allies, and you'll definitely make some enemies as well. And you as the player will grow fond of certain characters, and you'll be indifferent towards others, and for a few, you'll be anxious to get to the part of the story when you can slit their fucking throats. So the characters you meet in this game are interesting, and each of them has their own personality. And because of that, you can develop your own opinions on them, which will influence your decisions you make as Geralt. One of the things I do regularly is after I finish up a questline, I'll go online and peek the forums to see what other people thought about certain characters. And it's interesting to me to see everyone else's point of view of why they liked or disliked certain characters, like the Bloody Baron, for example. He's a pretty polarizing character. I mean, some people like him, some people don't. And when I first met the Baron, I didn't really like the guy. I thought he was a big meathead dum-dum, but as I got to know him, I started to understand him and become very empathetic of him and his situation. And that's something I never did in Destiny because not one single character has as much depth to them as the Baron does in this game. And keep in mind, this is just one NPC that you'll meet, he's not even one of the main characters in the story. You'll meet a bunch of interesting characters along your journey through this open world, and speaking of which, the open world in this game is awesome. It's huge, but more importantly, it's immersive. And not because of its graphics, which admittedly are pretty darn good, but I am playing on PC so I don't know how it looks on consoles. But it's not about that. Each area in this world has its own identity, its own conflicts and stories to tell, with its own tone and vibe to boot. For example, Velen feels a lot like a third world country to me. As I made my way through the area and interacted with the people there, it definitely reminded me of my time spent in third world countries, you know, minus the monsters and stuff like that. Velen is a poverty and crime stricken area that's always being terrorized by monsters. The common folk of Velen live in constant fear, and some of these poor souls are extorted in unusual and cruel ways just for some protection. And this is what I was talking about a few videos ago. Stories are supposed to make you think and feel, and that's exactly what this story did. The stories in Velen made me think back to the times when I went to third world countries and took a shit in a hole because there wasn't a toilet. It reminds me of how fucked up the majority of the world can be. I remember how I was walking to my grandmother's house in Guyana and a truck pulled up next to us and a bunch of crooked ass army dudes jumped out on us, one of which jammed an assault rifle in my face because these fuckboys were about to rob us because they noticed we were foreigners and obviously they thought we we had some cash on us. Luckily though, one of the guys we were with knew one of the army dudes so we got away safely. But this is the type of shit that happens in Velen. A lot of the Baron soldiers are not nice people. They'll rape and rob the very people they're supposed to protect, which of course is the same thing that the bandits in the area do. So yesterday when I was doing a Witcher contract for one of the NPCs in the village, I decided to do the job free of charge for the guy since he was poor and especially since he took a boy in who became an orphan after that monster killed that boy's father. See, in a game like Destiny, as soon as the job's done, I'm like, where my rewards at? Cause I don't give two shits about the characters in that game. But here in The Witcher, because of how immersive it is and how well done the story is, I'll forgo my rewards for no reason other than I'll feel nice about it because I did something nice for someone in need. And I know that might sound really stupid because this is a video game, but I was role playing, all right? And I enjoyed it and that's what it's all about. But Velen's not the only place in The Witcher with an identity. Crookback Bog feels very creepy and you get the sense that some shady ass shit is going on there. Novograd is a flourishing city that seems much more like a first 
first world country in comparison to the hellhole known as Velen. But it's got its own problems too. There's much less poverty in Novigrad, but it still exists. But the biggest problem of all is that minorities, or oddities as they're called, face severe discrimination. And throughout this open world, you'll see tons of question marks on the map, which are explorable areas with loot and most likely some baddies guarding it. And these sub areas often tell their own stories. For example, I went exploring one question mark in Velen, and as I was on my way, I saw a note on a tree. It said that there were some defectors from the Baron's army roaming around, and they were robbing and killing people, so watch out. So you know, of course, I'm ready to deliver some sweet justice to these fuckboys, but I head up to the area and I see some bodies. So I'm thinking, who killed these guys? And then, as soon as I say that, I see these giant mutant spider things. So of course, I gotta kill these little buggers. And after I'm done with that, and I'm picking up the loot and stuff like that, I hear something close by. So I walk over cautiously, and I see this big ass mutant spider, scorpion, crocodile thing. I don't know what the hell it was, man, but I know I had to kill this shit. So I get into a fight with it, and I'm learning its moves and stuff, and I eventually, I kill it. And I just smile because that was an awesome ass little experience that I had there. And because of that, I'm so much more likely to go exploring other areas in the game, not just for loot, but because it's fun and interesting to find out what each question mark on the map is. And on top of that, as you explore, you'll find new villages with NPCs and such, which will open up a fast travel point, and then you can start doing some side quests for the people in that area. And the side quests in this game are really well done as well. They're fully voice acted, and for the most part, they're pretty interesting. I just went on one where I had to look for a man's wife. And without spoiling it, this seemingly by the book search for a man's wife became pretty damn interesting. And trust me when I say there's tons of side activities in addition to the main quests. Overall, there's just a ton of content. I mean, I'm 28 hours into the game and I'm just now feeling comfortable giving you guys my first impressions. For most games, after 28 hours, you'd be doing a review or wrapping up the story. But here in The Witcher, I'm just getting started. So at the point where I'm at right now, I did progress to Novigrad and I'm in there doing some missions, but I left Velen before exploring a bunch of question marks, so I still have a bunch of stuff to go back there and do. And don't get me started on the main quests, man. Like I said, this story is a proper journey. And as such, the main quests are like a spider web. You go and you meet this one character and you inquire about Siri, and they know something, but they won't hand over the information for free. So now you gotta go do something for them first. And along the way, you meet up with some other characters, and then you start doing quests from them, which ties into the quest that you went on for the first character, and so on and so forth. So far, the storyline is a well-written spiderweb of awesomeness. But that's not to say I haven't had any complaints so far. For example, I still have no idea what the hell it means when people say Siri has elder blood. I mean, who are the elders? And how does she have their blood? And what's up with the wild hunt? I understand that they want Siri's power, but who the hell are they? Now granted, I haven't played the previous games, but I think a lot of people are jumping into the series with this title, so they were probably wondering who the wild hunt is too. But I'm not mad about these things simply because I haven't finished the story yet. And as long as I find these things out by the end, I'm cool with it. At least, I think so. <laughs> but you guys know me, if I don't like something, I'll be sure to tell you about it. But now, let's talk about the combat in this game. And here's where I think some people will take issue with The Witcher 3. While I enjoy it, I know some people will find the combat to be bland and repetitive. And that's because in the early hours of the game, a lot of the fights boil down to dodge the enemy's attacks, stagger them with Igni, and then land a combo attack. And then you rinse and repeat until the enemy's dead. However, it does get a lot deeper than that. And as you level up and unlock new abilities, you'll gain new ways of fighting. For example, anytime I come up to a bandit camp, there's almost always an annoying ass archer. And it's really hard to juke their shots from a distance, so you'll have to roll up on them and dispatch them first before taking on any units. Now, this can get repetitive if that's what you have to do every time you see a bunch of bandits, right? Because you'd be fighting them the same exact way because if you don't go and take out that archer, you'll get staggered by the arrows and then the infantry units, the guys with the swords and spears and whatnot will fuck you up. But as you progress, you can unlock abilities to simply block their arrows or you'll use Yarden, which creates a magic circle. And if you upgrade it, you can block all incoming projectiles, allowing you to focus on the melee enemies at hand. And another reason why I don't think other people will enjoy the combat here, it's not as flashy over the top as something like Shadows of Mordor. Now personally, I enjoy both. 
Some days I'm in the mood for The Witcher, and some days I just want to murder everything in the craziest ways possible. And on those days, I play Shadow of Mordor. Now some of you may appreciate the combat in both games like me, but some of you might prefer one over the other. Also something else to note is, controls can be kind of clunky sometimes, especially when you're just riding through the area on your horse. Roach is, is, is kind of an imbecile. He bumps into shit all the time, and sometimes the combat isn't as fluid as something like Shadows of Mordor. And I know a lot of people who have played the Souls games have complained about the clunkiness of the Witcher combat. Now I have not played the Souls games, so I don't know exactly what they're talking about. I just know a lot of people say that, so I want to tell you guys about it. But anyways, something else I like about the combat in this game is the pre-fight preparation, which involves you finding out what type of enemy you're going to fight and coating your sword with the appropriate oil for extra damage, and equipping the proper signs to counterattack the enemy. And of course, you'll have to learn the enemy's attacks and special abilities and then plan accordingly. If there's one thing I like, it's strategizing. I really enjoy scheming up ways of fighting new enemies. For example, the first time I faced a werewolf, I got wrecked. Partially because as you can see from the gameplay, I kinda suck. But also because I didn't know this bastard could regen his health. So on my subsequent attempts, I made sure to hit the werewolf with Igni after he started regenerating health because Igni is a fire sign which does damage over time, which of course prevents him from regenerating his health. And since I didn't have the proper oil to deal with him, I used a thunderbolt potion to increase my damage so that I could take him down before he had a chance to fully regen his health. Also, one annoying thing the werewolf does is he runs away which gives him time to regen his health, since you have to close the distance again to attack him with your sword or your signs. So my plan was, when he does that, I'll throw a bomb at him which will do damage over time which of course will prevent him from healing once again. This is the type of thing I really like in games, I really like strategizing and thinking of ways of fighting these enemies who have special abilities but also have special weaknesses. And of course that's something you don't really do in other games that I've played on this channel, <coughs> Destiny. But anyways, like I said, each monster will have its own strengths and weaknesses, so you'll have to develop strategies to deal with each one. But that's not to say each enemy is totally different from the last. For example, the first Witcher contract that you do will have you fight a griffin, and later on, in another Witcher contract, you'll fight this giant chicken monster. <laughs> and basically, you'll use the same strategy that you used on the griffin, which admittedly makes sense because according to the bestiary, these monsters are closely related, so of course, they'll have similar weaknesses and strengths, right? So when I finish the game, I can report back and tell you guys whether or not the boss fights have enough variety, but for now, I'm pretty happy with what I've seen so far. Now, this video isn't a recommendation on The Witcher 3 just yet. I'd like to finish the game first and see the big picture. I don't want to judge the entire game based on the first 30 hours. I'd like to judge the overall experience when I'm done with it because there could definitely be some problems later on in the game that I might not have encountered as of now. But don't hold your breath for that video too quickly because it might take a while to come out since a lot of people say that they get well over 100 hours out of this game. And The Witcher isn't a game you want to rush. It's one to savor and enjoy. You know, some games are like tequila shots. You just want to get it over with. But The Witcher is like a glass of wine. You want to take it and swirl it around the glass and smell it and slowly sip and enjoy it. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're not feeling too shy, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about The Witcher. Have you played it? If so, tell me what you thought about it. No spoilers, please. And if you haven't played it, are you now considering it based on my and other people's recommendations or what? Let me know. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow me on Twitter. Link will be in the description box below. That's it for me though, guys. Over me. Out.